Hey crafters, today I will be showing you how I made this miniature Swedish dollhouse. I started by cutting out the pieces for the walls and the floor, then I sketched out where the walls and the floor would connect so I had a line to follow. This also made it easier to know where to paint. I painted the kitchen in an off-white color, so that was the back wall, one side wall, and one side of an inner wall. It's easier to paint the inside before assembling, so that you don't accidentally get any paint on the floor or the ceiling. This project is based off of a Swedish dollhouse called Lundby that is a split-level house and has two different executions. The one I'm making is the newer one that has a large kitchen, but the older one has another wall on the bottom floor that separated the kitchen from the stairs. That wall would be located slightly to the right of where the bedroom wall is. I decided to make the newer one because it's easier to furnish on such a small scale. The dollhouse is a 1 18th scale dollhouse that I'm now replicating in 1 12th scale. So essentially this is a 1 12th scale model of a 1 18th scale dollhouse. This is one of the most popular dollhouses in Sweden and has been around since 1947. The company that makes them is popular worldwide. Then I painted the bathroom light blue. So that meant painting the other side of the inner wall. Next came the bedroom in pink, and lastly the living room on the upper floor in a light grey. I kept the floors fairly neutral and saved the colour for the bedroom. I also went ahead and painted the underside of my floors so that the ceiling would be white. I didn't do this on camera, so keep in mind that if you want the ceiling to be painted and you don't want to get any color on the walls, do that now before you glue down the floors. Once the paint was dry, I glued the back wall and the floor together. I cut out rectangles out of paper to use as doors. I glued them in place and then drew on a handle. Make sure you glue them on the opposite side of the wall so that they look like connecting doors and draw the handle on the corresponding side. I marked where the windows would go and cut them out. The dollhouse I based this off thankfully only has three windows, so I didn't have to relive my experience with the 32 window Amsterdam facade. As you might notice, I had to remove some paint at the top of the bathroom wall as I realized that it could be seen on the top floor. Keep this in mind if you decide to make a split level house. I also cut a hole for the stairs in the top floor and the top of the bathroom wall. When you're done with the windows, it's time to glue the sidewalls into place, as well as the floor above the bathroom and the bathroom wall. I want to apologize in advance for some out-of-focus shots in this video. My camera did not want to focus on some of the tiny details in this project. Here I'm making sure everything fits together properly. But don't glue the large top floor into place yet, the stairs need to go in first. To make the stairs, cut out a bunch of square dowels that are 1mm by 1mm thick. I use these continuously throughout the rest of the video. As you can see, I cut out a triangle that will be the front and then some supports on the back. I'm gluing the dowels straight onto the supports and trying to get them to line up as nicely as possible. Remember that they need to go on in a 90 degree angle or they will lay flat and you will have made a slide instead of stairs. Mm -hmm. 
Once I was done and it was dry, I cut off the excess wood and then painted it the same off-white as the kitchen and glued it in place. If the stairs don't turn out absolutely perfect, don't be worried about that because the banister will for the most part cover them up. So if you wanted to do this project and you don't want to glue down every single step, you won't be able to tell much of a difference, so you could just skip that step, but I wanted the extra detail in there because you can see them a little bit. You can now glue the top floor and the bedroom wall in place. I cut out a small piece of square dowel to make a step and left that unpainted to match the floor. For the railing, I cut and painted more dowels and glued them down one by one with the top of the railing last. The first piece I glued directly onto the wall for stability. For the banister, I drew out a sketch of the triangular staircase and put a piece of clear tape upside down over it. The sticky tape held everything in place as I worked. When I was happy with it, I cut the pieces at an angle to the same length and glue the railing on top. Two pieces had to be glued down separately as the banister runs up into the ceiling. I painted it all white before gluing it in place. Sadly, I don't have any footage of me gluing it down, but you will see the result later in the video. For the windows, I made a cross and glued it in place, then painted them all white, including the inside of the frame. To make everything fit as flat and snug as possible, the crosses on the windows are made up off of one long piece going straight up, and the pieces laying down are two separate pieces. The outside of the house got a coat of yellow paint and not much more detail than that. The real house has a print on the outside but no physical detailing so I decided to go simple and focus more on the inside of the house as that's the part you're gonna see. Let me know if you want to see a video in the future of me making another dollhouse that has more detail on the outside. Or if you have any other dollhouses you want me to replicate. I cut out some paper frames for the windows and glued them down with a glue stick. I did this to both the inside and the outside of the windows to make it more cohesive and give it a nicer finish. Time for the furniture! I kept it really basic on such a small scale. I started with the couch by gluing the back rest to the bottom and then the sides on. It doesn't really need explaining as you can see what I'm doing. 
afterwards I painted it grey and later decided to paint it even darker because it matched too closely with the wall colour. For the bed, I cut out a square of some thicker wood and painted it purple. I decided to go for some more color in the bedroom. Here is how I made the top of the bed, using some paper that is wider than the bed. I folded the edge of the paper two to three times and glued it down using glue stick. Once I was happy with how it looked, I glued it to the top of the bed and folded in the edge under the bed. This is what it should look like. Then I cut some pillows out of some more folded up paper and glue them in place. I added some tiny legs to both the bed and the couch. For the chairs, I made the back 4mm high, the seat 2mm deep, and the front 2mm high. I decided not to make individual legs, as they would be really flimsy. For the table, I cut out a square and glued the same wooden dowels from earlier on it as legs, and painted it all white. I also made a really simple coffee table out of three pieces of rectangular wood and painted it brown. In the bathroom, I cut out two rectangles out of thicker wood for the bathtub and the sink unit. I rounded the edge of the tub and used a micro-engraver to make the indent on both of them. Originally, I was going to use an electric nail file to do this. So if you have one of those, it would work as well. For the toilet, I cut out a thinner rectangle for the back and cut off a small piece of a toothpick for the toilet bowl. Unfortunately, I can't find that footage or the footage of me attaching the faucets to the sink and tub but all I did for the faucets was cut and bend a really thin wire to glue to the back of the piece. I painted everything white and added a small mirror. Here is what that looks like. The mirror is by Tim Holtz and can be seen in my vanity tutorial and my gold wall mirror tutorial. For the fridge, I once again cut out a thick rectangle and rounded the front edges with a file. I scored it with my X-Acto knife for some definition between the fridge and the freezer, and then added some thin strips of paper for the handles, then painted all of it silver. The kitchen is just a long piece of wood that I painted to look like a countertop and a stove. I later added some definition with a pencil to the cabinets. When I was done with all of the furniture, I started making the roof. I waited until I was done with everything else so that it would be easier to furnish before the roof got in the way. If you have seen my bunny cage tutorial, you will recognize the same method of making a roof. Make sure to paint the pieces before gluing them together. I painted the underside of the roof white as well as the edges and the top black. 
We are now at the end of the project, and the final detail I wanted to add was some paper trim to the edges. This is just regular printer paper that I pre-folded and glued down with some glue stick. I also pre-painted it to match with the other white details, so it wasn't a contrasting white that would look out of place. This is the final product! I hope that you liked the video. Once again, I'm sorry for the out-of-focus shots. If anyone knows of a camera that can focus on really small details, let me know. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!